Oh, hey, Park. It's Pastor Rafe, and uh, I wanted to check in with you guys and see how you're all doing. Um, it's been a couple... Actually, I didn't send a video out like this last week, so it's just this, been about two weeks since we've connected like this. Uh, but I've had a chance to connect with a lot of you throughout the week and just uh, hear from you, hear how you're doing, how you're serving your neighbors. Uh, gotten a chance to pray with a lot of you, and frankly, I just want to say, uh, like I have been saying, well done. Honestly, it's been pretty special to watch this church uh, step up and step into the needs uh, you might not hear of all the needs and all the things that are happening throughout the week and the way each of you are stepping up and caring for people powerfully, but I get to see a lot of it. Uh, I share some of it when I can, but a lot of it's just behind the scenes and really it's breathtaking. And so well done, Park. I'm encouraged. I'm grateful for you all. And I know that uh, in the midst of this hard season, you guys are doing a great job of being the church. I want to have a brief word. I got two big updates I want to give to you guys, but I, before I do, I just want to have a brief word on the events of this week, uh, particularly around the death of George Floyd. Um, as with many of you guys, my heart, I, I really, uh, I'm struggling to even find words this week to begin addressing this and discussing this. Uh, this, again, is a topic that we've talked on many times, but as a church, and that we're engaged in as a church, and that we speak into, and and try to be a light into. And yet when you're confronted with a video as uh, frankly just as disgusting as came out this week, it's, uh, it just kind of stuns you a little bit. Uh, my, I think of the verse that just says that the spirit groans with groanings too deep for words. And sometimes when I don't quite know what to say, I know the Holy Spirit uh, is inside of me groaning with groanings and with words too deep for even my own words. And so I think that's a little bit where I am with this right now. Uh, one thing I do want to say is I just want to reach out to you and just say, if there is anything you need to pray for, um, anything you just want to connect with people over, um, I, I am available to pray with. I'm available to talk through this with, to open scripture with. Our deacons are available. Nate Gehring, who's our director of care and worship, he is available. Uh, this is... It's just crazy watching that. And as a church, we enter into dark places. We are the light of the world. We carry Jesus with us and we go right into it and we address things head on and we point towards Christ. And there's so much brokenness that needs to be addressed. And so I just want to say two things. One, last Wednesday, this Wednesday of this last week, it was so good to just pray with people over this. And that was a wonderful time. And it just made me think that for many of you who haven't had a chance to really pray through this, um, please don't hesitate. Reach out. Uh, we are the church. We do that very well. We pray for each other and we open the scriptures together. And so if you need that, reach out to me, reach out to one of our deacons, reach out to Nate Gehring, um, and I hope you'll take us up on that. I want to talk about two things uh, just by way of update. One is our men's and women's ministry this summer. I know a lot of you guys have been asking questions about this. Um, we had the idea uh, a number of months ago, actually, that this would be a good summer to invest specifically in our men and our women separately. Now, just so you guys know, this is something I've never really done before, uh, and it, that's been intentional. I really believe that most of our small groups should be men and women and married and single and, and mixed um, because it's a picture of the church. It's a picture of God's people all investing in each other and doing life together and learning from different people in different phases of life. And I think our church is very strong because we've done that and we've really learned from each other. I know I love, my, I love being in my own small group because I have different people in different phases of life, men and women, and uh, it's been good for me and for others as well in the church. But I think from time to time it's good to separate into men and women. Now, just a little background and kind of where this is going. Uh, what we'll be doing is having a 10-week study, men investing uh, in men and then women investing in women. Uh, we had a team of about five different women who worked together from our South Loop location and kind of prayed through and discussed what would be great curriculum for our women to go through. And where they ended and where they ended up landing on is a Jackie Hill Perry study through the book of Jude. Now, one of the reasons they landed there is because our near North and Lincoln Park location, which is uh, headed up by the women's ministry there, which is headed up by Lisa Bishop, the director of women up at Near North. Uh, she has been leading women's studies a few times a year that, frankly, many of you have been a part of. It's one of the most powerful ministries of, frankly, all of Park Community Church. Every year, she has hundreds of women go through these studies together. And as they learn theology and as they learn to open their Bibles and study together, they're doing it in the context of with other women. And we thought it would be really good to almost basically partner with them in some ways and go through the study together. 
Uh, so our ladies from South Loop uh, will be joining groups of other women from South Loop to be going through that same study that our Near North and Lincoln Park women are doing underneath Lisa Bishop's guidance uh, up there. And so I'm excited for our women. I know the leadership team who's kind of selected this curriculum are excited. Jude is a fascinating book. I mean, frankly, I'm kind of intrigued by the teaching that's going to come through this. I trust it's going to be really solid. Uh, and I, one day I'm excited to teach my own uh, series on Jude, but uh, I might be eavesdropping in on your lessons to learn a little something myself. And so I know that'll be good for our, our women to both have a chance to connect, but also to dig into good, rich Bible study. For our men, uh, I've been working on curriculum. It's going to be a 10-week study. And actually, if you go to the website and you click on the uh, men's event on the Park South Loop page, you'll see uh, week by week what the topics are. Um, I'm going to be writing curriculum specifically for our men, uh, investing in what does it mean to be a man. Uh, now, this is a topic that is, uh, you can come at this from many different angles. And the angle I want to come at it is from this Bible. I want us to look in this Bible. I want us to understand what is a man. Paul in 1 Corinthians 16 says, act like men. Now, that is a very controversial verse because a lot of people don't think that there is such a stereotype as a man, that there aren't certain behaviors that men should be, that should be true of men. But what I want to do is I want to unpack what does the Bible say about this and try to restore a sense of biblical masculinity. I think as you go through the topics that I've outlined, uh, and you kind of get a sense for where we're going to be going, I think, men, you're going to be intrigued. I think, men, we're going to be tapping into something really powerful uh, that a lot of us need to jump into. And so I'm excited for that. We've got a great leadership team who's been putting this together. And so if you're not signed up for that yet, go ahead, go to the website, to the South Loop page, click on the event. You can look through what the topics are, what we're going to be talking about, but sign up. Uh, right now, I think we have about 80-plus women signed up for the women's and about 40 plus men signed up for the men's. Um, I said this before, but uh, that's usually how stuff goes in the Western church, two to one women to men. And that's one of the reasons why I'm investing a lot of my time right now into that men's curriculum. Um, it's because men, I really believe that we need to step up a little bit. And so I wanna challenge you, sign up, join, be a part of this. Men and women, sign up. It's gonna be a worthy, a worthy summer. And I think we're going to be stronger as a result of it. And we'll come back into the fall into our mixed small groups, having really invested well over the summer. Now, lastly, I've been having a lot of questions from you guys about when are we going to be opening the church. So um, I'm probably going to put my foot in my mouth as I try to talk through this right now. Uh, forgive me if I do. Give me grace. Know that this is a very complex subject and that we are praying over this and talking about this all the time. You should have gotten an email from our church-wide uh, or no, from the park, the pastors, the lead pastors team, which are four pastors at Park. And in that video last week, there was a video just kind of sharing a little bit of an update about how we're processing when to open up and how to do that. There's a number of factors I want to let you in on to think through as I'm, pro so you can think with me of how me and Sincer are processing when's the right time to open up. First of all, of course, we are concerned for safety. Uh, that is a very strong factor. We are in the midst of a pandemic, and we're in Chicago. We're in a big city where it's not over yet. Uh, while I believe and what it looks like is that we are going in a good direction, uh, we are still in the thick of it. And a lot of our people uh, are kind of, we have a lot of folks, frankly, who are in, uh, they're either in age ranges or they have specific immune def deficiencies, uh, that this is really a danger to them. And so we want to prioritize safety. Um, that doesn't mean we never want to open until there's a vaccine or something like that, but at the forefront of our mind, uh, we are thinking if we do open and when we do open, how do we do it with safety in mind, with your hearts in mind, knowing that everyone's going to be in a different place and how they're feeling about this. So just know we're taking this into consideration. We're praying through how we would do that well. If and when we do open, how do we do it? How many hand sanitizer stations do we need? How many seats can we put in there? Do we need one, two, or three services to do it? We probably won't be able to start with a kid's ministry uh, when we do reopen it first. And so how do we take that into consideration considering there's so many young families with children? We're praying through all those things right now. I want you, and you probably know my heart at this point, I want to get the church open, but I want to do it responsibly and I want to do it in a way that's healthy and wise. We are also part of a larger network of churches. And that's a consideration we have to take into. Um, even if 
we were ready to open in three weeks, let's say. Um, we're part of a larger network of Park Community Church, and some of our locations won't be able to open up for a longer period, specifically those that meet in public schools, as some of the public schools have said, you know, you're not going to be able to open up church. They don't know when. It's almost indefinite at this point. Um, now, that is in some ways a factor for us as well. We do meet in a school. Now, it's not a public school. It's a private school. It's Daystar. And so they have a, they have a little bit different of decision making. But we have to work with them, and we love Daystar. And I'm in conversations with them right now about when they feel it would be appropriate for us to hold a gathering and if they feel it would be appropriate for us to hold a gathering. And once we hear back from them and their board and those decisions that they make, then we'll be able to start putting a timeline on things and make plans. Um, and honestly, we want to respect Daystar, and we want to respect that they are leading a wonderful school. We believe in the work they're doing like crazy. Man, they are doing a great job in the city, serving people from all across the city. And we want to respect them as well as we rent space from them. And so we're taking all these things into consideration. Uh, at the same time, we believe in the gathering of the saints. Uh, and, and we really do believe that watching a church service online is not the same thing. It really is not. Uh, it's not just a baseball game where you can, you know, it, it's better to be there in live. If you can watch the Cubs or the Sox play live, that's better. Uh, but if you can't, hey, catch the game on TV. It's not the same thing. And I think we all feel that at this point. There's something about gathering with God's people, about singing with God's people, opening up the Word of God with God's people, encouraging one another, exhorting one another, laying hands on one another, taking communion together. All of these things are commandments from Scripture. And uh, we are called in Hebrews to not forsake the gathering of the saints. And so we do have a high priority on it. And so we do want to gather sooner rather than later. Some of you might know that just last night... Um, news broke that uh, basically houses of worship, it was, I, I, I want to make sure, I'm probably going to get my words wrong here, but it was judged that uh, the current order to not allow houses of worship to open without practicing civil disobedience was um, beyond the authority the governor had to set. What that means is, is that churches are free to open at this point and are, have been given guidelines of how to do it well. Uh, guidelines, you know, hand sanitizer stations, how far people should sit apart, but they're guidelines and they're best practices that they're asking churches to practice. Uh, what that means is that many churches, frankly, in the state of Illinois will probably be opening up very soon. And I want to, I, I, I do have a heart to open up as soon as we're able, but it has to be done with wisdom and we're taking all these factors into consideration. So please bear with us, pray with us, when we open up, we're going to do it really well. We're going to do it well thought through, and it's going to be with your safety in mind. I'm certain that some of you will think we're not opening up fast enough, and some of you will think we're opening up way too fast. Uh, such is the nature of the beast. Uh, and we are going to pray. We're going to pray, seek the guidance of the Holy Spirit, and then we're going to make decisions and move forward. And I just one of the things I'm praying for in this season is that as we move forward, do not let division grow in our church. Uh, wherever you fall on this, whether you think we're going too fast or too slow or just, the, we need to be a church that's unified, that's praying together, that's seeking the things of God together, that believes in the power of the Holy Spirit. Division is where Satan just rears his ugly head and he gets in there and then he does all kinds of nasty stuff. And so pray with us. Uh, there's a heavy lift ahead of us and uh, we need a whole lot of wisdom and we need all your prayers we can get as uh, I believe the best days of this church are coming up. I really believe there's great work for us ahead. So that's a bit of an update for you today. I'm not going to jump into the Bible as I'll be doing that with you as we jump into uh, the Beatitudes on this Sunday. And I cannot wait to preach. we got a good one coming this weekend. Uh, until then, until I see you on Sunday, I love you guys. I'm praying for you. Thank you for all the ways you're serving and loving and praying for everybody else across the church. It's really amazing. And Lord willing, I'll see you soon. Bye, church.